Well, we're uh, we're a long ways from uh, Kingsport tonight. It's been quite a journey to uh, be down here with you, but uh, there is a familiar spirit in this place, Amen. and it is characteristic of the family of God when they get together and they begin to break God's bread and the whole multitude is fed. I don't know why I, I, my heart is so full because I love, I love your dear pastor so much and Brother Ray and I, um, we have spent uh, many, many years in isolation. Our church has uh, been cut off for some time in fellowship. And I'm not saying that as a complaint because God never stops working. God never stopped working. God continued to work and do something in our lives that couldn't be done any other way. Yes. My own heart is so full tonight because because when I come into this house and I know, when I know and I feel the presence of God here, bless my brother. I, I understand to some small degree what it's taken to keep the presence of the Lord in the house of God. Men of God that carry the gospel bring something out in my life that never came by multitude of study, many commentaries that I've read, things like this. But when I see a man of God stand to his feet, and I see the anointing of God on his life, and I see, I see the door open inside of our heart and in our mind. I appreciate that that is no small miracle that has occurred. Hallelujah! And each and every one of us are recipients of of other men's grace. Yes. Amen. Paul told Timothy, you are a partaker of my grace. Yes. Uh -huh. And we have, for 17 years in Kingsport, enjoyed the benefits of, of Brother Ray and his ability as a teacher. But there's been no lack of suffering for him to allow God to work in his life and to create something brand new in his heart. And while it was being done in his life and while his heart was being changed, so was our heart as a congregation. That's the way it ought to be. We've been partakers of his grace. And tonight there is a wonderful spirit that I feel in this house. And if you came to Kingsport, Tennessee, you would feel the same bonds of peace, the same bonds of love, because there's a desire in each and every one of us to lift one another. Come on. See, God wants to be exalted. Yes. Yes. He wants you to have a place in your heart yes. special like no other. Amen. He is a jealous God Amen. and does not want to share that place with anybody. Yes. Amen. And each and every one of us, Come on, huh? as we are led of the Lord, we allow God to take up a boat inside of us. Amen. And when he comes in, it's an experience yes, it that, 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 that can't be compared oh, yeah. with anything in this world. Yeah. Because it didn't originate in this world. Yeah. 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 See, every, everything, that, everything that we labor at and everything that we strive at, That's it. it's vanity and vexation. That's That's it. It. But when you reach for the Spirit of God, yeah. there's, a, yeah. there's an unction from the Holy One inside. You're just never satisfied yeah. until you touch the throne of God. Yeah. Your life isn't 
fulfilled Amen. until you felt the power of God yes. surge through you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we're just alike. Amen. 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 We're just alike. Amen. Our church in Kingsport is full of the love of God. Thank you, Father. Full of the power of God. Thank you. Full of the sweet Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, I want to give a little testimony about a sister in our church. Yeah. We have a sister who faced cancer in her in her body. And she heard from the Lord two words. Trust me. God told her out of his own mouth, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> she made a commitment in her heart to trust him. Yes. Thank you, Father. And did you know that she had to have some surgery? She had to have some chemotherapy. She had to have some radiation. But did you know tonight that God healed her? Hey. Hey. God healed her. Every good thing comes down from the Father's life. But the miracle in her body was not necessarily this healing of cancer. Because this woman has been transformed in our church ever since. She made this commitment in her heart that she was never going to be quiet again. She was never going to let the devil steal her testimony. Hallelujah. And when she began to proclaim the good things of God and what God had done for her, God, God began to work uh, work through her yes. in a mysterious way. Yes. Now, you'll have to forgive me. I have. Yes. Yes. Because I'm just a poor little pitiful Tennessee boy that's allergic to pine trees. <laughs> I'll have a glass of water every now and then. Amen. But I want to tell you this story. It's true. Tell it. She was so excited about what God had done for her that she couldn't contain it. And I remember the first night that the doctor had told her that she was cancer free. She couldn't wait to get into church. Yes and tell everybody at church about it. But it was more than that. She said, God told me to trust him. Trust him. Yeah. And we're still learning how to trust yes, God on a day by day basis. Yes, we are. See, the experiences we had yesterday right. are not enough to Come carry on. us even to the present. Come on. She had this experience and she believed in her heart that God healed her. She still goes back for her checkups and God tells her, yes, you're healed because the doctor says, yes, you're healed. Yes. But now that's not all of the story. No. The other night, the other night, the Spirit of God was so sweet in our service. God. Well, we had this precious sister who was so broken in her spirit because the doctor had told her Listen. that she had breast cancer. Listen. <laughs> but she knew somehow that if she could get to church, she knew that God could help her. See, she had a little trust. Listen. She had a little faith. She believed that if she could just get to church, oh, somehow oh, somebody would touch heaven for her. God. Now here's this, this other woman and and she's a she's she's not timid. She was the head of the nursing department at the at the Holston Valley Hospital. So she's not timid in any way. But but you know because of the way we've done things in the past, we've always kind of held women in abeyance. Uh -huh. You know, we'll let the men pray. Uh -huh. It's all about the men. Uh -huh. Come on, brother. Come on. Let me tell you something. It ain't all about the meat. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Brother Ray, we knew about Sister Diane. We knew she had cancer. We'd already heard the women were a buzz in the church about this precious woman having cancer. 
She comes to church. Typical service, power of God's falling, wonderful music is happening. And I'm here to tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. I witnessed it with my own eyes. All of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord gets on Brother Ray and said to him, said, you have Anne, pray for her. He went over and he got her and brought her and faced her in front of Diane. And he said, you pray for her. You call to the Lord and he'll heal her. You know that very next day when she went to the doctor's office, they already had their CAT scans. They already had their x-rays. They already had the mammograms. They already knew where the cancer was. They already had seen it. But she's in the doctor's office the next day for three and a half hours because they're taking all their x-rays over again. <laughs> Finally, the doctor comes out and he says, well, I don't know what's the matter, but my Lord, it's good. for a person that's gone through the fire and through the flood and through the trials to pray that prayer of faith. Let me tell you, I'm learning. Yes, there's a lot of things. I've been, I've been a part of Gospel Assembly Church since 1976. <coughs> and everything that I learned produced fruit. Everything has produced fruit. Wonderful truths that I still have today that are wonderful and marvelous. And those are things I'll never let go of. But when I see this generation that's out here in front of us, that's it. That's it. Please bear with me. Go ahead, How irrelevant we have become in the way that we manifest ourselves, even in our services, even in the way that we've done things. I'm called to preach to this generation. Come on, yes, God. Brother Marlow, I love you and revere you highly. Yes. But I can't preach to the generation of Brother Souders. No. They're mostly dead and gone. Right? <laughs> but to this generation, yes. Yes. I speak. Yes. Come on. This generation, God's opening my mouth to Come on. Telling them yes. about the good Holy Ghost. Yes. Telling them about the blood of Jesus yes. I tell them about how good God is. I'm so thankful tonight that if we're willing and we're willing not to be like the children that encompass the same map year after year after year and drive our tent pegs down so deep. Don't let us do it. That when we yes. see the pillar of fire, right. and we see the cloud, yes. that we'll pull up all the family yeah. behind yeah. and we'll go with God. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you, yeah. the methods of yesterday are in explicable to this generation right. that cannot connect. Right. Yes. They can connect with the Word. Right. The Word will never die. The Word is always going to be true. Yes. Yes. You preach the Gospel. That's what we've been called to do. Yes. Right. Tell people about the salvation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. But the way that we have done our services and the way that we have ourselves behaved to one another is inexplicable to this generation. That doubts everything. Hallelujah. God opens a door for each and every one of us to walk through. I pray 
that my day wasn't over in 1976. God, let it forever be that I want to be a part of the ongoing truth of God. As truth is revealed, let me revel in that truth. But above all, let the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ reign supreme. See, everybody understands love. First time that I was down here in your church, one of my favorite moments. Favorite moments, guys. Time had run out. Yeah. Brother Tom Parrish got up and preached, and he had used up all the time. Yeah. We had to go catch a flight. What can you do? The airlines won't wait for you. And Brother Marlowe looks at me, he says, Brother Doug, he said, would you like to say something? I know you don't have any time, but would you like to say something? And all of a sudden, in my heart, I only wanted one thing. Yes. I just said, Brother Marlowe, I want a hug. Come on. Yes. I want a hug. Yes. <laughs> Jesus said they shall know you by your love uh, to another. Yes. <laughs> least of the expression yeah. that I can give to a child of God yeah. in that moment of need is a hug. Yeah. Right. Greet the people of the Holy Kids. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Seeing your brother hungry and need. Amen. And then saying to them, go thou and be warmed. Go thou and be filled. Amen. When you have it in your power and your means to give yeah. and you don't give. Yeah. Okay. All because they don't see things the way you do. Come on, brother. Come on. Say it, brother. Do you know what? The first time the Lord got hold of me, I didn't see the way anybody <laughs> saw it. <laughs> right. You were told. I didn't know anything. We all trust me. I got the word of God. Is immutable. Yeah. Amen. It is absolutely going to stand to the day that Jesus Christ returns. Yeah. Amen. But we're supposed to be preaching the truth in 